All right, so you know that there's a lot of AI tools that can transform a long video into multiple short form clips. For example, we have Opus Clips in which you just input a long video and then it edits the best parts, adds fancy captions, centers the person in frame and so on. But the problem with tools like this is that the only way you can access it is only via their website. So they don't have this thing called an API, which is what basically lets it connect to other services like in this case N8N. And this is exactly where this tool called Clap comes in. So it can edit the best parts, create some fancy captions, etc. But now we actually do have an API. And now with that API we can use it with tools like N8N. So in this case, I created an AI system on N8N that can trigger from one of your videos to later transform that long form video into multiple viral short clips, of course, using the Clap API. And then these get uploaded to your Google Sheet so you can review them. So for a quick demo, I picked this video talking about time management tools. And this is what the AI created from it. So it created a title, it got a virality score, and of course, the description to post for social media. And if we check one of the clips that has been generated, then you can see that it adds a title and also the captions. And this 45 second section is based on that specific topic. And of course, with this foundation, you can later on add features to it, like to automatically post it to YouTube or connect to this whole workflow to an agent tool so that you can chat with your agent, send long videos and get those cool short clips on demand. So in this video, I will teach you how to create this whole workflow a step by step so that you can make all of those other features possible. And if you haven't done so yet, you can join our brand new community so that you can get this exact blueprint that we'll create. So everything you would have to do is go to the blueprint right here, click on download, and then in N8 and you can just go to the top right and import from file, select your blueprint and open it. So now this whole workflow will be ready to go for you to just use it. And of course, apart from this blueprint, you can access all of the other ones that I talk about on my YouTube channel. And if you're a complete beginner, then you can take this Intro to AI Automations and Agents mini course so that you can learn what this space is all about. And you can also take this NADN Launchpad to create your first automation, your first AI automation, and your first AI agent. The goal here is to help beginners get into this space and help the intermediates improve their skills. So you'll also be getting tech support for any issues you might be having when creating your N8N workflow. And you'll get access to a high value AI network of entrepreneurs, professionals, and enthusiasts. So in this moment, we have an early bird, early launch price for the first couple of members that sign up. So if my YouTube channel, myself, and everything I talk about resonates with you, then you're invited to join us. Okay, but anyways, now let's get started with this AI system. So first off, I'm actually going to be triggering this from one of my videos on my test YouTube channel. And this is an Alex Hormozzi podcast talking about the balance between life and business. But to use this video as a trigger on N8N, we have to use something called RSS feeds. So in our case, our RSS feed will trigger whenever we have a new video. With this set, now in N8N, you have to search for RSS feed trigger. And here it's just checking if there's a new video every minute, but you can change this to whatever you want. In my case, I'll just leave it as every minute just for this test. And then down here is where you actually have to put in the RSS feed URL. So to get this, you just go to your YouTube channel and here you just right click on any empty space and click on view page source. And here it'll bring you to this weird page. And here we can find the RSS feed URL. So now with your search function enabled, you just search for channel and ID with the underscore in between and then just click on next until you find something with an XML. So I just found it and you can see that it says feeds videos.xml and then the channel ID. So just copy this whole URL and then N8N in in, just paste it into your feed URL. And now if I click on fetch test event, then you can see that it responds with this video right here. And if I put it in my browser, then you can see that it's my last video right here. And now that we have the URL, we can get started with the whole clap API process. But actually before we do that, let's just put in this video URL into another field to keep everything more organized. So here you just add a set node, then add a field and name it video URL. 
And for the value, you can just drag and drop this video URL right here. And if we click on test a step, then you can see that it now has its own dedicated field so it can be more organized. Okay, and now to get started with the whole clap API process, and we first need our clap API key. So go to clap and quickly create a new account. And then you have to add your billing information because yes, this API costs. And you can see the pricing right here. By the way, all of the links will be in the description below. But basically, this API has three steps. First, it'll cost 44 cents whenever you input a long video. And then from that long video, it will create multiple short form clips. And that's 32 cents per each of that clip. And once the clips are ready, it'll cost 48 cents per each video export. And unlike other APIs where you have to pay before using, here you can just set up your billing and it'll charge your card every 30 days after you first started. But anyways, now that you have your billing details correct, then here in the bottom, you just go to API again. And here you'll see a button to create your new API key. In my case, I already have it. And this is the one I will use for NA10. So okay, whenever you start using an API that you don't have experience in, you first always have to check their documentation. So here it's telling us of course that we need our API key and that this will be the base URL to use. So back in NA10, if we search for the clap node, then you'll see that it doesn't exist. So in cases like this, you can simply just use the HTTP request node. So just search for it and put it right here. And now we can start filling up these properties. So right on the clap documentation just gave us the URL. So let's paste it right here. And then to continue, let's just check the API reference. And here it tells us the step by step instructions to follow. So here in the generate shorts from video step, it's telling us to use this endpoint and that we can use all of these options. For example, we can translate the video. We can select the maximum amount of clips to create. We can also set a target duration for those clips. We can enable or disable emojis and much more. And it also shows us an example request payload. So now we can just copy all of this, which is the reflection of all of these properties and paste it into N8N. So now here, just enable send body to send all of this data. And in the specify body, set it as JSON and paste that JSON right here. So if we take a closer look, then we can see all of the properties that we have just talked about. So in this case, I'm just going to change these dimensions to 1080 by 1920. I'm also going to enable emojis. So here, just change that to true. Then for the target and max clip count, I'm going to change it to three because I only want three clips. And I don't want to translate this video, so I'm just going to delete this property. And now that we have set it up how we want it to, let's actually change this URL into a dynamic variable so that it always gets the latest video from our YouTube channel. So back here, just delete this default URL, change this to expression and drag and drop our video URL field into here. And now you can see that it's mapping this data correctly. And okay, now we have the body ready, but in the documentation, it's also telling us to use post and to use this endpoint. So just copy this endpoint and paste it into N8N. So now we have the base URL and the endpoint for this action. And as instructed, let's also change it to post because we're sending data. And finally, if we check back again, it says that requests must include the API key in the header. So just go ahead and copy this header. Then in N8N, enable send headers. And here you just format it like this. So in the name goes the authorization and in the value goes the bearer and your API key. So delete all of this, but leave the space intact and paste your API key. And now if we click on test step, then we can see that we have this first step processing. And so that this status can change from processing to ready. It can take one minute, two minutes, even up to five minutes. So that's why we have to use the second endpoint called get status of task. And this will just tell us the current status. So when this process of analyzing this long video is set to complete it already, then now we can actually go to the third step of listing the generated shorts. So now here I just changed the name of this node to analyze input video. And now instead of adding another HTTP request node, we can just duplicate this one and connect it right next to it. And here I'm just going to name it get status. And then inside we have to change the properties depending on whatever the documentation says. So here it's telling us to use the get method and to use this endpoint right here. So delete the previous endpoint and replace it with this current one. Then let's change the method to get. 
And if you noticed right here, it's asking for the task ID. So let's delete this one, change this to expression and drag and drop the ID. And as you can see, now it's getting the correct information. So now let's check what else this documentation says. And in this case, it's not mentioning anything about a request payload or a body. So we can just disable this send body. And then now if we click on test this step, then we can see that it output this current status and it's now set as ready. And this is great because for the next step, it requires us for this status to be ready. And normally this should have been as processing, but I took some pauses off camera, which is what probably gave it some time to be set as ready. So ideally here you would have to use an if node to check if this is at processing or ready. So if it's still processing, then we use a wait node to wait like five minutes. So then after those five minutes pass, then it'll check again. And in 99% of these cases, after those five minutes, it will be set as ready. Then after that, we could normally continue with the next steps. So to do that, just search for the if node. And here we're going to compare two values. So map the status right here as the first value. And for the operator, we're going to use a string operator because this is text. And specifically, we're going to use this is equal to. So now here for the second value, we have to put in ready. And this condition will go like this. Is this value equal to this value? So if this is true, it will go to this true flow. And if it's false, it will go to this false flow. So for the false flow, we can just add a wait node to wait five minutes. So here, leave this amount as five and change this unit to minutes and then drag the output of this wait node back into get status. So here it'll get the status. Then it will check if the status is ready or not. And if it's not, it will go through this false flow and wait five minutes. And after those five minutes pass, it will check the get status again. And in the worst case scenario, let's say that it's still at processing. So we can just go again to this if flow and it'll go to this false flow and it'll wait five minutes again and then go back to this get status. And then now let's say that it's at ready. So this if node will check that that's true and it'll go to this flow right here. So for this next step, we will actually get the listed generated shorts. And in this case, the method is get and this is the endpoint. So let's just copy this. And then in N8N, let's just duplicate this node and plug it into this true flow. And here I'm just going to name it list clips. And here let's leave the method as get. Then let's delete this endpoint right here and replace it with the new one. And it's asking for the folder ID. So let's just execute the previous nodes. And now the data is coming from this if node, specifically this true branch. So now we can just delete this folder ID placeholder to replace it with the actual one. And you might think that it's ID, but it's not. It's a bit confusing, I know, but it's output ID. So change this to expression and map output ID. Then again, in the documentation, it doesn't mention anything about sending a body or a payload request. So we can just so we can just leave send body off. And now when we click on test the step, you will see all of the generated short clips. And in this case, it's three because that's what we specified. So we have the name, the virality score, the explanation for that score and the transcript. So this is great, but we don't actually have the video URL just yet. So to get that video URL, we actually have to first export these projects. So for this next step, let's just duplicate this node right here and let's name it export clips. And here it's telling us to use the post method and this endpoint right here. So now let's change all of this in the node. So change it to post and replace this endpoint with the new one for step four. And here to replace these placeholders, now we actually need the folder ID. So delete this one and put in the folder ID right here. And for the project ID, it's the actual normal ID. So just delete it and map in this ID right here. And now it's actually mentioning a payload field, which is the body. So just copy this JSON and enable send body, set it as using JSON and paste it right here. And this preset ID is an actual preset you can create to customize the font of your captions, the color, the size and so on. And you can just get it by going to your exports, then go to any clip and click on edit. And then here, if you click on style, then you can see all of these presets. So you can tweak some settings like the position, the color, etc. And once you have your preset, you can just click on these three buttons, click on edit, then click this show ID button and copy this ID. 
But in my case, I just want to use the default one, which is preset one, two, three. And then when I click on test the step, it'll actually start exporting all of these projects. So as you can see, all of these are set as processing. So now whenever this status changes to ready, we'll now have access to the actual video URL. So now just like before, we have to use another node to check if this status changed to ready. And lo and behold, that's exactly what the last step is about. So let's duplicate this node right here and let's rename it to get export status. And here it requires us to use the get method and to use this endpoint right here. So in this new get export status node, change the method to get and delete this previous endpoint and replace it with the new one. And then here we have to change all of these placeholders. So delete the folder ID and replace it with the actual folder ID right here. Then delete the project ID here and replace it with the real one. And then delete this export ID. And this is actually referring to the normal ID. So just map it right here. And again, this doesn't mention anything about a body or a request payload. So here just disable the sent body. And now if we click on test this step, then you can see that the status is set as ready and that we have the video URLs right here. But like I told you, remember that I take a couple of pauses when recording. And this is why right here it's set as ready. Because in any other normal scenario, if you go directly from export clips to get export status, then this will be set as processing. So here again, we can use this loop to check if the export is ready. So here just add this if node, and then for the first value just map in the status, and then make sure that the operator is set as a string and is equal to. Then let's just put in this comparison value which is ready. And then for this false flow we can just duplicate this wait node right here and connect it so that it creates a loop. And then finally we can simply just duplicate this node to check again if the export status is ready. So I'm just going to change its name to final. And here if I test a step, then you can see that now the status is set as ready. And this is because it was already ready when we checked it with this if node, so it didn't have to go through this wait node. And if we copy this URL to our browser, then we can see the actual video. And it has the title, the captions, the person formatted correctly in frame. And this whole clip talks about a specific topic. And this output also comes in with descriptions for a bunch of social media platforms. So now to upload everything to a Google Sheet, you just create your own one, then add the Google Sheet node right here, and select Append Row in Sheet. And here you have to connect your Google Sheets account. And this is quite a process, so I'll just be leaving another tutorial in the description. But after that, just select your Google Sheet. In my case, it's called Long to Short Agent. And then select your actual sheet. In my case, it's called Sheet 1. So just go in the drop down and select your sheet. And then here you'll be able to see all of the columns. So as a tag, I just put in short clip. Then for the name or title, I just drag and drop this name right here. For the URL, I just mapping this SRC URL. Then for the virality score, we actually have to go to this list clips node. And here just mapping that value. And then for the description, this comes from the last node. So just go back here. And in my case, I'm just gonna map in the one from YouTube. So now if we click on test this step, and then we can see that all of these values have been uploaded to the Google Sheet right here. So boom, that was a tutorial on how to create an AI system on N8N that can cook up those viral short form clips. So thanks for watching, that'll be all. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. And if you like this type of AI content, then check out my other YouTube videos. And subscribe because I'm going to be making more similar videos just like this one. And also any feedback is welcome as well because I want to grow this channel into a Oblivion and provide as much as value as possible. And again, if you're really, really interested in this, then I highly encourage you to join our new school community. Right now, it's at an early bird discounted price for the first couple of members. So if you want to lock in that deal, then you can check the link in the description. The goal with this is to get into and improve in this space altogether without leaving anyone behind. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.